Hey kids, and welcome to Stylish Rumble. We're gonna do some special effects today. So exciting. Just for funsies, I figured we could start with the most cheap effects I could think of. If you're in a real rush and you just need something ultra fast to get you through the day, like bang bang, you just want something cheap, these are the effects for you. <laughs> and I start with fire, cheapest fire you will ever see. So you just need a, a sort of fiery color blob. We can use other modules to affect the color and then we're going to need some green screen. So I'm just going to create a big old squiggle, a little bit tighter. I'm gonna copy that. I'm going to paste it onto a second layer, flip it. So we've got our two cutters. I'm going to name these and we're going to share a comp. Let's extend our exposure on everything. F5 is your exposure. If you don't know this, learn your hotkeys. And on frame one, start down here. We have 60 frames. We'll see what the speed looks like once we animate it. You never know with this junk science. <laughs> and now we're gonna use a cutter. Cutter. Bam, got your fire. Use it starts a little higher if I extend my exposure. There you go. Cheapest fire you ever would need to see. You can, if you want to fancy it up, you can oop, move this bottom bit around a little bit just so it's not so static. So we'll just make it a little bit narrower and a little bit fatter, make a little cycle, and then just copy paste, copy paste. Boom! Insta fire. That took uh, three minutes. <laughs> if we want to get real fancy, uh, get into the compositing side, let's throw a color card in. If we're doing something like a camp scene, we might be in the mid-brown range, somewhere down there. We can slap a glow on there. Uh, I'm going to use the source color so it stays sort of yellow, and then the blur sort of goes up. So the thing I'm not super keen on with the glow is it makes it a little bit transparent, which may or may not be the look you're going for. For this fire, because it's a real solid color on there. It doesn't look too bad. It actually gives it a little bit of a fiery look around it. Let's see how far we can jack that up. Yay! But it never gets really ultra white in the middle. It doesn't get really hot. So if we plug it in a couple times, it's going to become super hot fast. So you can even make a second glow that's a little, a little less blurry. So we'll just give it a small blur and it'll give you a nice crisp white. And then you can throw a matte resize on there and make it a little bit smaller. So let's say minus, so that's minus 15. And that looks pretty okay. We'll render it out. There we go. So if you need a real cheap, cheap and dirty fire, this is pretty good. I might stagger the, the right side from the left side a little bit because they are, because it was a copied and pasted drawing, it's mirroring itself a little bit. But I mean, it's not hard to quickly draw up a second squiggly side on the right just so it isn't so mirrored depending on what you want it to look like that's a nice cheap and dirty one to have in your toolkit next one we're going to do a, use a similar method create a flag wave boom you just create yourself a big flag we're going to need a couple cutters this time i want my wave to be a little bit looser we don't want it to get too high uh with fire you can really give it a like a bit more life if you want to rather than just this kind of squiggle so the fire you can get a little bit uneven but for a flag wave you probably want to keep things a little bit more steady nice steady wave medium size copy and paste and flip 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 make sure it's not mirrored too much you can stretch it out a little bit I make this color a little narrower I got, I got a little bit crazy <laughs> with my first drawing and then boop. So these cutters, I'm making them massive right now, but you could keep them in a, sort of the ballpark of the size you want. Give yourself the approximate flag length you want. Let's see, you want your flag about that long. Extend the exposure. Frame one, you're gonna want over here. Boop, boop. And there. So we can change the speed of each of them a little bit if you want your top and bottom to be out of sync. Um, flags, flags tend to be a little bit sync top and bottom, but on an angle. So rather than if you're doing a flag wave and you're actually going to the trouble of doing it in a, a nice way, <laughs> not this hack job, 
when you've got your ripples on the top like this, then you want to look at an angle to see where that flag is going to line up along the bottom. So instead of up and down, they bump curve, curve like this, and then curve, curve on the bottom. Um, instead of mirroring it exactly like this, if you keep your bumps a little bit of an angle one behind the other, you'll get a nicer flag out of that insider tip. So now these are going to slap a cutter on there. We have motion keyframes on, and you've got a shoddy flag wave. Yeah, so this one looks like this side is on the pole. You could flip the whole thing if that, that's how, you, how you're feeling. <laughs> I'm going to flip the whole thing so that it's going the other way. So now my flag is going to go this way. Boom. And then you could just line up some strings here to match up with your pole, and you've instantly got an ultra-cheap flag wave that's good enough for whatever you're doing. If you're feeling fancy, Gonna throw a little deformer on here. Do, do, do. Put on my envelope deformer. Doop. Doop. So I'm just gonna put one right down there. And so now the left and right, you can animate your deformers a little bit like this. Just go along and, and wiggle your sides a bit just so they're not too even-y along the way. So if you're feeling like, hey, I wanna put in 10 minutes instead of five minutes, you could pay attention to the way these waves are happening and make sure that the inside, like the upper loop, this one's always in, and the outer loop, it's always out. You can like, actually try and make it look a little bit more what a flag would look like. We ain't got, this is, this is quick and dirty stuff. This is when you got no time, or it's just something that's way in the background that isn't going to make or break the whole picture, and you can just throw a little flag back there. That one took a little longer than the fire because we needed uh, to get the ends working. But I feel like that's still, that's still a pretty decent, cheap job. I mean, a flag isn't the hardest thing to do. If you're interested in getting into effects, it's one of the very first ones that you want to practice on. Make sure that you get a nice cycle out of it. All right, so if we need to detach this to a flagpole, what I would do, put some little loopies like this. A little knot. I'm gonna create two more drawings. Throw a comp in there. And I just create a little string. Let's make it a little fatter. Let's say 11. And then you just wanna give yourself a distance from here to here that you wanna eyeball. Try and keep it the same distance. You can't mark a position on your flag, of course, because it is uh, panning as you go. We're gonna put our pivot point right on this knot and make sure our string goes there. We'll start it off like that. So now, boop, boop, keyframe on your first one. When I want to put a keyframe, but I want to keep something in the same place, I just use my up down key. And because my hand is already resting over on the keyboard, way over here, I just hit up down and it's faster than hitting F6. Uh, just because my, let me show you my hand. So when I'm animating, my hand's here, my filthy keyboard. So I keep my pinky and ring on my left, right. So that goes back and forth on your timeline. And then I've got quick access to these here. Going all the way up the F6 button is all the way back there. So just hitting up, down over here is much faster if you're animating quickly. When I'm rigging, my hand is more over here because we need to control D, control S, alt, various keys. So you really want to get in tune with learning your hotkeys. Okay, come on camera. So you really want to get in tune with your hotkeys, like playing a piano. The more you practice, the more you're, the better you're going to get at it. So up, down. By the way, I've had like eight cups of coffee today. So if I'm going really super fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a fast talking person. I try to slow down, but I'm not, I'm not very good at it. So this goes down, 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 down. We're going to bring that guy down and shorten it up. Up, 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 up. Find the biggest, highest up point when it starts to get up there, and then loop. Because we we're trying to go, to, I'm going to try and use as few keyframes as possible. So I like to just ballpark the high points when I'm doing this sort of thing, and then if there's places where here there, it slows out as it's going up, stays up for a little while, so you can add another frame.
I feel like I probably should have put the flag a little closer to the pole so these strings weren't so long because you can you can see how long they're stretching from one to the next because sometimes the the flag is getting wider and narrower because this is so cheap. But yeah, that's fine. This is a background feature, something really far away. If this is something on top of a building, way back here in your scene, so you've got the front of a school or something, that's the size of your frame. You're, you're gonna be able to get away with that. And you can, you can even throw a quad map on here. Keep it small on this side. Put that way and shorten these guys up. They're all frames mode. So now it's coming more towards the front. See? Fake perspective on a fake flag wave. Now if you need to throw a couple different colors on here or you needed to put an emblem or something, like a picture, something like a crest, the hardest thing to throw in there because you're going to have to make sure it's uh, lining up and being cooperative. If you wanted to throw a few colors on here, that's not hard to do. I mean this thing, if we go in here, we could actually just slap a couple colors on there. Yeah, that's a country blue. So they're going to stay very parallel, but you could throw a couple extra deformers on there if you want those shapes to morph more. That's a cheap way to go about it. Or you could put the yellow and the green on their own drawing layer. So instead of having the green actually part of it, you could throw a green in here and you could put a peg on it and then shrink it and grow it based on the waves. If this was actually getting animated by hand and this was curling this way, then we could get some overlap in it, which is why a classically animated flag is just going to look nicer than this. We could keep our verticals more sensible in size so we wouldn't get this really steep dip down here and then we'd be able to just put a little bit of a flap in there. So you can get more out of a classically drawn flag, but sometimes you only got 10 minutes and you need something. Bam, here's your 10 minute flag, including little dangly things. I mean, if this is a really long shot, you wouldn't even need to put those strings in there. You can get away without it. No problem. One more. All right, so here we have cheap test tube. Some, we're gonna throw some chemicals in there. So we need to throw in a liquid. So that's easy. Copy paste, hack it off there. You're going to figure out where the top of your liquid's going to be. And we're going to just mash down a circle because we're not going to bother trying very hard to get this top bit and then just get rid of the line work. So now we'll say that we've got it. Greeny goop liquid here. And I'm going to separate. You can use your layer selectors to make sure all of these different pieces are on the same drawing. So you could use your overlay for uh, highlights, you could put this the goop on the line, you could put the back on the color, that kind of stuff. But because we're doing this on a super time budget, I'm going to slap this over on a new drawing and copy. And I'm only going to put all the liquids on. I am making an overlay because we need something to use as a cutter and the other stuff has transparency. So our, our overlay is going to be our cutter and then the line is where the liquids are. So now what I'm planning to do here, because I haven't actually said that, is make this into a bubbly liquid in the cheapest possible way. So we'll make ourselves a bubble. I'm just going to use a radial gradient to make it look a little bit spherical. And I'm going to put a highlight on it because bubbles always look better if they have a little bit of a highlight. So now I've got our bubble and I've got it on a new drawing, which we should name bubble, but I'm going to lazy it up now. We want an occasional big bubble, a whole lot of smaller bubbles. We're going to get a nice collection of bubbles. If you want it to look really fancy, you want to spread them out more and then create two different layers or th even three different layers. If your time is more limited or it's not really a, a large prop, it's a small background prop, then you can get away with just one layer like this. We're feeling pretty fancy right now. 
So I'm going to double up my bubbles. Bloop. And shrink them down. One thing you have to remember is you, you can't just copy paste and flip these because they have highlights. So if some of your highlights are on the left and some of your highlights on the right, it might have a little bit of a weird, like this doesn't look right vibe and you might not know exactly why it is, but it won't, it won't look as correct. Now all we got to do is use the cutter. So remember we already created this overlay here. So we're going to need an inverted cutter because we want our bubbles to stay inside of that overlay. On frame one, we're going to put them down here. And if you want this to start off with a little bit of bubbles and slowly get hotter, you just put more bubbles at the bottom. All right. So now extend all our exposures over here. Move our bubbles up. You can hold your shift if you want to keep it in the right position. And now if you're going for the fancy bubbles, this one of them should move faster than the other. You just take one of them and end them a little higher, or you can start them off a little lower and then they'll go faster because they have farther to go in the same amount of time. Let's make it go really fast. So you can see one is overtaking the other. These guys need a composite. Beepy doopy doop. They're coming out. They're getting pooped out of the visual side of this thing. And then you've got a bubbly concoction for very little work, very little time. If you want this to be fancier, you can put a little deform around here to get this bubble side up. You can bring this up a little tiny bit, just a little bit like that. And then your bubbles are going to come up above the surface. You could also add in some popping bubbles here on the surface if you have time to do that sort of thing. So there's nothing wrong with using this sort of thing for any sort of a bubble effect rather than doing a cycle. It really depends on how much time you have. A cycle is a bit nicer because you can really get these nice top bubbles. So here, because we're using a cutter, this is getting hacked off and you can see it's, it's like a, it's not right. It's an upside down broken bubble. But if we were doing this on a cycle, you'd be able to go into each top bubble as it hits, do this, and then have a couple frames where it bleep, you have little bloopy bits. Those are the best. Bubble bloops, so good. They're just like, they're the most fun. But if you don't have time, oh, and I got rid of half my highlights here. here bad pasting. But if you don't have time, guys, these are for if you don't have any time, or if it's the last thing to do and you're just done with everything and you just want to go home, play StarCraft. There you go. Three very cheap and dirty effects for you to take and do with as you please. I am going to get more into cycle making because that's something that I did not know how to do when I started. Cycles are pretty tricky until you get you find a nice uh, workflow for them. So we're going to get into some better cycles. But here's some cheap and dirty, cheap and dirty tricks. Take and show your friends. Look how cool my flag wave is. I tried so hard. <laughs> so I'm gonna go now. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you in the next video with probably something good. I don't know what it'll be. There's no plan from now on. There's no, there's no plan. Bye.